to the part where I get to ask you about some myths that have been swirling around the internet. Uh, more specifically, I was looking up Wiki, the Wikipedia page in, uh, just last week, which, which makes it about August 2016. And I came across some points that people had uh, uh, left in the, on the page that surprisingly are considered weaknesses or myths of, of BPMN. So I'd like to get your thoughts on these. Um, the first one is that there is ambiguity and confusion in sharing BPMN models. Okay, um, to me, this is more of a tool vendor issue, perhaps. Um, a lot of it just has to do with the ability or quality of the import-export capabilities of a tool. And I've seen tools that are very good at it and other tools that are, are not as good at it. So when you share a BPMN model, you might have issues uh, importing it into a different tool. And you might have to do some work after that. But I, th I think that is... A, a vendor issue and uh, the specification itself um, gives the um, the XML schema, the meta model behind it so that tools can do that. There were a couple minor issues. I think the, the OMG has been addressing that and there's a, a committee that does interchange formats and they've been working on that and showing demonstrations at conferences and so forth. So I think any of the technical issues are being solved I think it's mainly up to the tool vendors to, to support that. Okay, next myth. The BPMN does not allow for routine work. Okay, um, don't really understand this at all. I think that's kind of what its main, one of its main capabilities is, is to be able to create simple straight through processes, a series of activities. We got uh, ways of doing you know, looping based on data or based on uh, a list of items. Like if you have an invoice and you have a bunch of items in that, you can do a loop that supports, uh, that manages all the different items on the list. So I think BPMN does this very well. I think kind of what it was designed for. Okay, next myth. BPMN does not support knowledge work. Um, it, it does support some knowledge working capability or case management processes are unstructured. Uh, when BPMN was created back in the early 2000s, those kind of unstructured processes were out in the business world. We knew about them, but uh, weren't able to get in all the things that we needed to do to support that. Uh, we created a, a sub process called an ad hoc process where you could do the activities in any order that you want and create a condition to say when you're done. So this was kind of a, a step in that direction, but it wasn't complete. Uh, and in version two, we didn't uh, add enough to it at that point. Uh, so in the meantime, the OMG also created a, another standard called case management model and notation, CMMN, uh, to kind of fill in the gaps there. Unfortunately, it's a separate spec. So if you want to do unstructured processes, you go to CMMN, you want to do the structured ones plus maybe a little bit of unstructured you go to bpmn um, i think this in the long run could be addressed by bpmn 3.0 where we can consolidate that and you can use one tool one model to create all the variations of business processes converting bpmn models to executable environments is impossible well i don't see that at all i think that's really up to a business process management tool. And there are tools out there that do this. So you can uh, uh, go into a BPM tool, import a business BPMN model, and then create, make it executable. You can do that now. And there are lots of tools that do that. So it's really handled by the BPM tool. And, uh, you know, I worked at IBM, they do that. Other tools do that. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I think this myth should be busted. There is no support for business rules. First off, BPMN isn't intended to do business rule or decision modeling. Um, it's intended to do business it's process modeling, as we discussed. But it does provide hooks into these other tools or other models. Uh, for example, there's a, a task in BPMN called the business rule task. And it specifically was added so that um, a BPM tool could use that task to interact with a, a decision engine or business rule engine, come back results and give it back to the process. So 
uh, BPMAN has the technical capabilities to support it, but it isn't, wasn't intended to do the, the, that kind of modeling. BPMN is way too complicated. Okay, so this has kind of been a long-standing complaint. It, it uh, was there even before we finished the first specification. And I kind of get the complaint. Um, and when we started building BPMN, we were intending it to be for business people. So it had to be simple enough for business people to, to do and understand. We didn't want it to be very technical looking. Um, it had to be graphical, etc. So it had to be simple. But all the people in the room had had years of experience with actual business processes. We had been consultants, we had trained people, we had understood what the issues are for business people out in the world. And real business processes are complicated. And if you look at one company, they need a special kind of loop. You go to another company, they need a transaction or something. Um, you go to another company, they have some other requirement. You add those all things up and there's a lot of little details that have to be added to the business process. So real business processes are complex, uh, so it has to be complicated, but has to be simple at the same time. So we knew this going in, and so we came up with an approach to try to deal with that. Uh, and that approach was to build some simple building blocks um, for example, we have three main objects. We have circles for events, rectangles for activities, and diamonds for gateways. And those are the basic elements. So there's three things. You can see them. They look very easy. You can create models with them, and you have that simplicity. But to add the complexity, you can add then variations of those things. Uh, you can have different types of tasks and different types of gateways. And there, then we add the different markers to tell people, you know, what is this particular type of task? What is this particular case? What do those behaviors mean? So with the basic building blocks, you can add, build up the complexity within the simple structure. And that was the intent. And that was the approach we took. And I guess it's up to individual people to decide whether we were successful in that approach. Finally, last question is, what about BPN 3.0? Do you know anything about it? At this point, I don't think there's any major effort in the OMG to do 3.0. Um, I would like to see it done eventually, and I think it will be. Um, but to be honest, for tool vendors to add a new support to new standards, it is a lot of work. And the, the vendors out there that created version two Kind of want the stability in the marketplace for a while so they want to be able to build up um, the customers they have and they also gather more requirements over the time so we'll know more about what is needed for version three uh, a couple of the things that we mentioned earlier certainly we need a beefed up um, support for case management or unstructured type processes uh, we could add uh, lower level processes at doing service level modeling those are the model inside of a task. So, you know, how does uh, uh, how do you implement those kind of things? And those there are things at both high and low levels that could be added to BPMN in version three. So, unfortunately, I don't know exactly when that would happen. And when it does, I certainly would like to be involved. So, to find out more about Steve or myself, please click on the links below. We'll have all of our socials uh, listed out there. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And tell us in the comments if you'd like to see Steve or myself cover any particular topics uh, that, that, was, that resonated with you. Till next time.